Hello and welcome back to Codeblaze and this is going to be the final episode in creating the Pixel Chunks in Unity using the job system and the burst compiler. So in this episode we will be finally adding the burst compiler. So there isn't much to do from the programming side. There is a few things that we need to take care of and do some cleanup. And before we get started I just updated my Unity version to 2020.1 since it was released. And I also updated my jobs package to version 0.4. So nothing has broken since those updates. So we can just get started. So I'll open my code editor. So the first thing we'll do is uh, put the attribute of burst compiler on our job. Let's say burst compile and we'll call this compile synchronously to now compile synchronously is something that you would use when you are working in editor uh, that way you will face less errors since in editor the way burst compiler works it it uses the just in time compiler and once you build your final game uh, the burst compiler compiles all your job code ahead of time so this way you can get you can be more consistent with your results in the editor so let's just play now and see what errors come if there is actually no errors we are pretty much done with the video but i'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case and let it refresh hmm. So as you can see we are still getting a terrain but uh, we are also getting some errors logged in our console. So the way burst compiler in editor works is if you get any errors during the compilation it falls back to non-burst code and a non-burst code was anyway working before it so that's why we are getting the terrain but our proper burst compiler is not being used here so that is something that we need to fix and the error message that we have gotten is pretty cryptic and i tried googling this error and i wasn't able to get something consistent but uh, there's a few patterns or few key things that you need to take care of when you're working with the burst compiler so when working with jobs using burst compiler you need to make sure you're not accessing any type of managed data throughout your job so everything should be a buildable type or any of the native containers but in our case we are accessing managed data that is in this get face vertices method so get face vertices uh, calls the vertices array and the triangles array which is an int3 array so this array part makes it managed data though internally it's just integers and int3 is also a buildable type but using this c sharp arrays causes it to be managed data so what we need to do is convert this to native arrays and i already have that data somewhere so i'll just open my previous solution so i'll be copying in both the native array the triangles data and the vertices data so the triangles data that we have here is a two dimensional array again i'll be flattening it out to a one dimensional array so since i don't want there to be nested native arrays so i'll just copy this and we can apply this read only attribute on top of these since we know these two uh, arrays are going to be read only only so with that we need to modify our get face vertices function since our triangles array is a one dimensional array and the logic is pretty much same as the yeah so the logic is pretty much the same that we are already doing with the block data where we flatten out a three dimensional array to a one dimensional array by basically multiplying and adding the different indexes in the different dimensions and we'll be doing the same here so in our getting the index we'll multiply the direction by four since uh we the original two dimensional array uh, each of the internal arrays was of length four and we'll basically add i to this 
So with this, we can remove this and this axis is now a single dimensional axis and all our errors are fixed in this code. Okay, so these read only attribute uh, is something that you can apply and it would help burst compiler create more optimized code. And similarly, we can go in our chunk job and say that our mesh data is write only and our chunk data is read only. Now these attributes can't be applied on properties, so we will create them as fields. Okay, so with this we can again go ahead and play in Unity and see if there are any errors. Okay, so we can now see it tried to burst compile our code, but uh, we are still getting errors. There are a few errors here. The first one is we can't call static constructors or something like this. So this basically means is we can't access static data in burst compile code, which we are actually doing here. So we see our blocks file again. Uh, the two arrays, the vertices and the triangles arrays have been defined as static and when we are using the proper burst compiler, we can't even access static data because that comes in the managed realm. So to do this, what we can do is pass this data to the chunk job and till now I haven't figured out a proper way to define global constants for job and I've searched the forums and it seems support for it would be added in the future but for now what you can do is create another structure here we will call this public struct block data and we'll basically be copying in the mesh data values here okay and since now our data is constrained to a chunk job we can actually take this function here get face vertices and put it in the chunk job only it doesn't need to be separate and it doesn't need to be static and we'll define a variable here this variable will also be read only public block data and we'll take our get face vertices function and we'll call it on the block data so it's pretty much the same the only thing that we need to make sure is we are now calling this new get face vertices function so we can get rid of the block extensions code here so with this we can actually remove this code here since it's not being called anywhere except it must be called in a cube job so i'll let it be here but just to clarify the chunk job will now be calling this get face vertices function so it could have been a static function outside so the burst compiler won't complain about calling pure static functions it will only complain about when you are accessing some static data because that data is not part of the job if you are calling static functions that's okay since we are doing here this get block index is a static function but it's a pure function it doesn't depend upon any external data so that is okay for the burst compiler okay so with this we'll play in unity and see if there are any more errors okay so we are still getting an error Oh, yeah, we didn't um, assign our block data here, so that's why we are getting that error that I forgot. So, back in our chunk where we create the job, we need to assign the block data also. New block data. We'll basically say the vertices are block extension dot vertices. Okay, it was block data dot what was it called? What 
means block data now the chunk job block data dot vertices and our triangles are block data dot triangles now why is it complaining Okay, so the reason it's complaining is we have defined these on natives array and in our chunk job we have them as native lists. So we can change this here. Since we know it's going to be a fixed type, we'll say our block that is native array. And now if I go back here, we won't see any errors here. So let's play again and see if we get any more errors. So we are still getting uh, four errors which saying that I'm trying to read from a native array which I've declared as write only and there's only one array that we have declared as write only and that's our mesh data. So is there somewhere we are reading it? So wherever this has been referenced we basically check that and yeah it's right here. So we are reading the length of the vertices here and that is actually where we are reading the mesh data so we need to get rid of this and it's pretty simple rather than uh, getting the length again and again from the vertex array we can store the length as a private integer so we'll define a private int v count okay and we'll like whenever a face has been added we know the length will be incremented by four so we don't need to do this so we will basically say v count plus equals 4 then we need to add that minus 4 logic here to everything okay now we can get rid of this so basically earlier uh, we had this minus 4 here that we used to do before so the v count we didn't need to do this minus 4 on each and every v count but now we have to do it here now you may say we can actually do a minus 4 here and then it will not be proper way to do it but this way is more simpler for me because we are adding 4 and if we subtract 4 it will ultimately be 0 every time but we need the vertex count to be separate that's why we are doing it this way now if we play again I think everything is sorted and we shouldn't get any more errors and the bus compiler should work Yeah, so there weren't any errors in the console and that means the burst compiler is working. Now you may not see any performance difference here in the editor but if you build this game and if you have a large number of chunks, you may definitely see a good amount of performance boost while using the burst compiler. So the only things that you need to be careful while using the burst compiler with the job system is make sure you don't have any managed data in your jobs since if you have those you'll get some cryptic messages that were um, that i showed in the first errors that we got the next thing is you can't access any static data because that is considered as managed data and finally you can define your inputs and outputs of your jobs as read only and write only and make sure they are read only and write only and that way you can get some more performance out of the burst compiler so with that uh, I conclude this series and I may do another episode on UVs but I haven't planned that for now so basically if you want to implement something like a text atlas since it is not part of the burst compiler or the job system so I wanted this series to be more like a practical approach on the burst compiler and job system but UVs is something that's more geared towards a proper voxel system so that is something that i may or may not do so you can leave them down below in the comments if you want to see a tutorial on that and other than that i'll be starting in a few new series like the bolt extension which is a visual scripting plugin for unity is just became free from unity so i'll start learning that and i'll see if i'm able to make some tutorials 
and I may do a tutorial on a complete like making a game from scratch so that's also something interesting I do like to I would like to do some more tutorial work towards Unreal Engine also since um, by seeing my analytics Unreal Engine is more popular on my channel so though my channel isn't that big I'm just saying for that and that's it for today so if you have any suggestions please leave them down below in the comments do give a rating it really helps me out and subscribe for the upcoming videos thanks and bye